troubled times. And uh, glad there could be a school reunion went well. But, uh, high school? Yeah, My favorite. No, I don't believe that. I do not. I do not believe that. I, one of my favorite writers, Nathaniel Hawthorne, the great American writer, went to his 20th college reunion. And he wrote a letter back at Bowdoin College, and he wrote a letter back to his wife, and he said, Everybody here looks like a funny old man. Do I look like a funny old man? <laughs> Anyway, these reality checks are healthy and humbling, and the chief virtue of the Christian is humility, so however you can do that, it's good. And today we'll look at another lesson of the Lord, the timing, God's timing, how important that is in the scripture, the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verses 1 to 9. Listen to the word of God. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brothers, therefore, said to him, Depart from here and go to Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you were doing. For no one does anything in secret, while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it, that its works are evil. You go up to this feast. I am not yet going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. When he had said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word by the power of your Holy Spirit. We've seen in the past weeks Jesus has performed many miracles, has become famous and a threat to the powers that be, the religious and social establishment. He's a danger to the existing power structure and they want to destroy him. That's why he won't return to Jerusalem center of religious power because he knows they will kill him. But before his time, the time will come when he goes to Jerusalem, when he knows he will be killed, crucified, but resurrected, brought back to life. But now he's at the very beginning of his ministry. He has so many things to do, to teach. It is not the time, it's too early. God gives us things to do, but at the right time. We may be ready, anxious, but the circumstances are not right. God knows this. One of the hardest things to do is to wait until the right time, until God puts things together, finishes things. To be patient, wait, have faith, trust God's timing. Don't rush, don't worry, don't panic, don't hurry. Jesus' brothers here, the friends, urge him to go on. You're known now, they said. You're famous for miracles, for, for teachings. Get going. Grab this opportunity. Do what you 
You're meant to do. You'll be more famous, powerful, rich, maybe king of Israel. Now, especially during these troubled times, we are often anxious to act, to get it finished, to get it done, to do something. Tensions rise. It's hard to wait. It's hard to know it's not quite God's time yet. It's not finished. It's not complete. Things haven't completely fallen into place. Jesus knows his time has not come. And it would, it would thwart it would thwart God's plan for him to go this early. For God says in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. God says in the Old Testament, to everything, there's a season, a time for every purpose, God's purpose, under heaven, here on earth. We have all felt the frustration of Jesus' brothers, that God should act, should do something, we're impatient, we wanted something so much, needed something. So much like these children mentioned, who need food, who need a secure home, safety, education. But we know from our personal experiences that when the thing finally comes, the way it comes, it is for the best. There was a reason for the delay. Those of us who lived a long time know that from so many experiences. It's harder, it's harder to do when you're young. But to see that it was best that whatever it was, that person, that job, that house, that trip came later. Other things had to be done, Jesus knows. Other things have to be done in his ministry before that one thing can occur. It wouldn't have been as good if it had come early. We, we want things so much, we wish for things so much, we want them immediately. Everything these days is immediate. I recall after our lease on faculty rose up, I thought, we must buy a house. We have to buy a house right away. I had a good student whose family had a house for sale, right next to the campus. So I wanted to see it. But he said, eh, you don't want that house. <laughs> you don't want that house. He told me. <laughs> I said, well, let me just look at it. But let me decide if it's right. No, he said, you wouldn't want that. Don't you hate it when other people decide what you want and don't want it? Don't you hate it when people just tell you what you're thinking and what your purposes are? I always believe, you know, leave it up to the person, let them decide. Free will. I interviewed once for a job that I thought was absolutely perfect. The dean of that college was a Christian college. I won't mention the name until I get to my memoir. The dean said to me, you wouldn't like it here. I was ready to give up tenure, give up an endowed professorship, move across the country, buy a house in a very expensive area. I was ready to give up everything to go to that Christian college. And she said, this isn't for you. 
let me decide that. Could, could I decide that? But that's their nice way of saying, we don't want you, right? <laughs> that's their polite way of saying, get lost. But no, I think they really meant, you, you wouldn't be happy here. And in the end, it turned out she was right. She knew better than I did. Things happened in that department just within a year or so. It proved I wouldn't have been right there. I wouldn't have been happy. I wouldn't have been productive. I was meant to stay where I was. And I'm so grateful now. It, it turned out for the best. So especially these times we're in. To remember what Jesus said, it is not my time yet. And everything is in God's time. We, we know he's leading us in certain ways, but we don't know when. We don't know exactly how. And then we have to suspend that desire until he shows us more. And as I've said so many times, we have to be open. We have to have an open mind, not to sin or evil, but an open mind in terms of what God has planned. Because so many times, as the Bible says, it's beyond anything we could hope for or imagine. Usually the timing is so great because he has much greater things as we know. We know what happened when Jesus finally went to Jerusalem. When he prayed in the garden. When he washed his disciples' feet. Even when he was betrayed when he saw that trial, when he was condemned to death, when he died on the cross and was resurrected to life and appeared to many hundreds of people before ascending to heaven. And, and he had to lay that foundation. And we have to lay the foundation that God gives us to do the things in his time and not second guess him and not get anxious. It gives a tremendous peace. Tremendous peace. Not that we shouldn't be seeking God's will, looking for His direction, doing what He shows us. A tremendous peace that we don't have to figure everything out. Thank heavens, we don't, because we can't. We don't have to have everything figured out, everything planned, everything in place. We should do what God shows us today, but be open to where he's sending us and what he's doing. And have that confidence right up to the moment, right up to the moment of our death. To not worry, to know even our life in death is in God's time. To not worry when we read the paper every week and we look at the obituary page and we see the ages of all those people who have died. And <clears throat> it's smaller than our age. Oh, we're real close. Do not worry. Our lives are in God's time. And our leaving this earth is in God's time. Whether it's another 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, it's in God's time now. And we're to do what He's given us, just as He, Jesus showed us He did what God gave Him to do and what not to do. And to trust God with that timing and to see again and again how much better it is than our own timing and sense of what needs to be done right now. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this teaching. We thank you, Lord, for your providence and plan for our lives, for the world, for each of our lives. That our lives are in your hands. The timing of our growing and the timing of our moving and working, retiring, the time of our death is in your hands. It's in your timing. Just as Jesus' own life and ministry and life and death and resurrection was in your time. And he knew that time because 
he was God, that we can know that even if not specifically what will happen, that the things are in your time, in your history, in your providence, in plan and purpose. And we just look for that, that you would have us to do during the brief time on earth, and especially looking forward to that unending time <clears throat> with you in heaven and eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.